I'm a professional diver Anon. I posted a story of mine a couple weeks ago or so. Not going to write it up again but to to give the gist of it, I was doing body recovery on contract for the police, found a body and attached a line and started swimming to the surface when something grabbed the body and started dragging it at incredible speed. I cut the line just in time to prevent myself from being yanked down with it. I'm sure some of you deep sea loving anons will remember it. I've got a couple other stories of my own that. I can go into more depth if you guys want. Mostly stuff involving fish that were a bit too big for comfort coming to take a look while I was doing some welding, or that time my rebreather malfunctioned and I started having a full blown drug trip while I was 200 meters underwater. Fun stuff. I've got a ton of more interesting stories though, mostly from other divers. I can't speak to the truth of them because I wasn't there. Some are pretty, out there. Keep in mind, some of these stories are sort of like diver urban legends, they get passed around until nobody can remember where they got started. The story I'm about to tell you though, I heard from a good friend of mine, a dive master and the guy who trained me on my first dives. I have no reason to believe he's lying. This was back sometime in the late 80s I believe. My friend let's call him Frank had just gotten out of the navy and started doing civilian work. Mostly welding, and he worked with the police for a short time like I did. Like me for Frank, diving was both a hobby and a job. So he would spend his weekends exploring known shipwrecks and points of interest known to the local diving community. Sometimes he would just set anchor in a random spot and dive down to see what he could find. He usually found a whole lot of nothing, but on this particular occasion he hit the jackpot. Metaphorically speaking, because there was nothing good about what he found. He was doing an extreme depth dive that day, which as I explained in my last post. I'm not going to name the lake he was diving in just in case it somehow leads back to him, but it was a very large lake that was 900 plus feet deep. So he was pushing the boundaries a bit, especially since he was solo diving without any partners. He gets to the bottom, and as per usual there's just the usual sand, silt, and some rocks covered with algae. Not even any fish that he could see. He digs around in the sand a bit to see if he can find anything, and he feels something hard and smooth buried a few inches under the surface. Frank grabs it, and tries to take a look at it a bit further up away from the floating sand. It was some sort of prescription bottle with the label worn torn off. So he puts it off to the side and keeps digging, finds something much bigger right away. He pulls it out of the sand, and to his shock he's staring at a human skull, he digs around in the sand some more to find the bones, pretty much feeling his way around because the fine sediments he was digging up made his visibility zero. He found something else hard and pulled it out, but it wasn't another bone. It was another skull. He kept digging and found on his estimate at least 200, likely more skeletal remains at the bottom. Mixed in with the skeletons were he estimated thousands upon thousands of prescription bottles like the one he found earlier. He didn't have enough oxygen time to stay down for long, so he dug around in a few spots to see how large the dump of bodies and bottles was. He estimated it must have been almost 50 x 50 feet roughly in size. So it's possible that there could have been many, many more bodies there than his estimate. Probably the spoopiest bit is, since he had done work with the police he knew what a body looks like underwater at various stages of decomposition. The bones had been picked clean by the fish, but the bones themselves couldn't have been there for much longer than five years. Like a good citizen Frank carried one of the skull pieces up with him to the surface. He talked to some of the people he'd worked in the police with as a diver, and they immediately told him that they were not going to investigate and that he should never speak about it again. Being someone who valued his own skin, Frank did just that, 
and ended up moving to the other side of the country about a year later. He never told me why, but I've got the feeling that he no longer felt safe working living there. Okay, time for one of my own shorter stories. Frank has more interesting stories than me, but I want to share some stuff from my own personal experiences as well. This actually happened just last year. I was doing some maintenance repair work on a dam for an artificial lake. I had chosen this spot to work in particular because it was a treasure trove for exploration as a diver. Since the lake was artificial, there were several small villages, farms and homes that had been submerged when it was constructed, something that's actually surprisingly common when it comes to artificial lakes. So I was down at the bottom of the dam, doing a visual inspection of the gate guides and seal plates, trying to find anything that needed maintenance or replacement. It was summer, so the water was pretty murky and visibility was low. Something shove nudged me on the back and I turned around expecting to see my dive partner, but instead I was starting right at the face of the biggest, ugliest catfish I've ever seen. Water does weird things to your perception of size, but I could swear this thing must have been the size of a small SUV. If it had wanted to, it could have eaten me no problem. I froze in place because I hadn't expected to be in danger from the aquatic wildlife on a freshwater dive, but he swam away and circled around for a while as I worked. It's actually fairly common, fish watching you while you work but I've never seen one as big as this before. I'm just glad he wasn't hungry. This next story is a bit out there so to speak. I trust Frank, but being deep underwater can do strange things to the human mind. Narcosis can and does cause hallucinations among other mental disruptions. I've experienced it myself firsthand. When it's happening, your brain can't distinguish reality from the hallucination, and there's never a point in your mind where you go oh wow I'm tripping. Because it's usually a case of the frog boiling where it comes on you slowly. Anyway, back to the story. This was probably late 90s to early 2000s Frank wasn't really clear on the date when he told me the story. Frank at this point has graduated from casual wreck exploration to full-blown treasure hunting. He's got a boat with sonar designed to find shipwrecks and all sorts of neat stuff. To this day he hasn't found anything of actual value, but I suppose the thrill of the chase is a treasure of its own. It was the long weekend, so Frank was making a big expedition to a remote part of the coastline where an old ship apparently sunk in the early colonial period. Nobody ever found the wreck, their route was known but there was a storm and they never arrived. The location was extremely remote, you either got there by boat almost a two-day trip from the nearest suitable launch or you hiked there on foot. Frank figured that the remoteness of the area accounted for the wreck never being found, which is why he was so keen to search himself. He still talks to me about going back there today, since he now has a portable sonar system that you can mount on a canoe. He didn't have one of those back then, so he just packed a bunch of food and supplies for the weekend along with his diving gear. I doubt you could even carry a canoe with you on that hike, but if anyone could it would be Frank. He gets to the ocean, sets up camp a ways away from the ocean in a sheltered nook, then drags his gear down the ocean and goes for a dive. First day he just snorkels mostly. Second day, after he has the lay of the land his words, not mine Frank decided to go diving. He only had two cylinders of air with him from the hike, so he had to make his time count if he wanted to find anything. The entire expedition was ill-advised in my opinion, but Frank does what Frank wants. Apparently he thought he knew exactly where that damn wreck was because he had figured out where the currents would be pulling any debris. So he sets out for that spot, swims in and dives. Frank gets to the bottom and to his disappointment, does not find a shipwreck or sunken treasure or anything really of interest. There's a lot of just various debris and shit, some pop cans trash and garbage even. 
Just when he's about to give up, he hears the telltale sound of a boat motor coming from the surface. His immediate instinct is to surface and say hi, but his instincts were screaming something else. So he decided to wait and see until he ran out of oxygen and had to surface. He swims up a bit closer to the surface to see if he can find the boat, following the sound. He sees come in above him and cut off the engines. Something big gets tossed into the water and begins to sink like a rock. Frank said that it was immediately obvious to him what it was based on the silhouette, but he didn't really fully realize until the man sank past him, eyes bulging with shock screaming with empty lungs. Frank followed him to the bottom as fast as he could. When he got there the guy was still conscious, but just barely. He pulled off his rebreather and fit it over the guy's face while trying to free his legs. His legs had been put in buckets full cement. Frank alternated breaths on the rebreather for about 15 minutes while desperately trying to break the guy's feet out of the concrete, without any luck. The whole time he thought the guy was trying to talk to him, trying to say something that he couldn't understand. After about 15 minutes, Frank realized that he couldn't get the his legs free. If he stayed down any longer, he would run out of air and die himself. He said leaving the guy down there to drown was the hardest damn thing he ever did. The poor bastard realized Frank was leaving and frantically grabbed him, trying to rip off his rebreather and keep it for himself. Frank ended up kicking him in the face and swimming off without looking back. He reported it to the police and they found the body about a week later. It was a mob-related killing, apparently it actually happens more often than you think. I don't think Frank ever got over what happened, the way he described it. First the pure relief and joy when Frank gave him rebreather, and the agonized, panicked fear when he realized Frank was leaving him. Being someone who dives for a living, I've had lots of friends who drowned on the job for various reasons. It's not something you really dwell on a lot, but this man has always stuck with me. What the hell was he thinking, in his final moments it's probably due to my line of work, but I've got a bit of a fascination with death. Or rather, the final thoughts right before death. That last, final spark before everything gets snuffed out forever. I have more stories to tell you Anons, but I've got to go do real life shit now. So if this thread is still here later, I'll come and post some more. If not, I'll post them in the next deep sea thread that I come across. Thanks for all the kind words.